Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. And uh, as we do every night, not every Monday night, we get a chance to sit down with head coach Jim Harbaugh. And, and coach, 31-10 to 10, down in Bloomington. Not everything was perfect, but you come away with the win. Uh, two road victories. What did you learn about your team uh, in both of those stops? Well, I thought our team, uh, once again, it was a great team win. Start with that. Secondly, to uh, – have a big second half, you know, to, to finish the game and have have those uh, second half moments that truly tell you about yourself and, and what you can be. Uh, that's what I took away from it. The journey to the promised land, if there's going to be a promised land, have, have those kind of second half moments in them. And um, there's a lot of things in that game that keep us humble that we have to work on. But at the same time, a glimpse of what we can be when we really play that, that Michigan football, tough, tough brand of football, everybody uh, playing together, kind of a coming out party for the pass rush. Uh, I thought that was out, outstanding. I mean, 34 pressures. I've never seen that in a game. Seven sacks, 10 TFLs. Uh, Luke Schoonmaker, coming out party for him, continues to be. Uh, and, and J.J., had that kind of game. The receivers, Ronnie Bell, Cornelius Johnson, some of the plays they made. Um, offensive line protection, that's one thing that you know, really hasn't, hasn't been talked about either coming out of that game. But that was, that was a heck of a game for the O-line. J.J. Got, got hit one time. We had a miscommunication on the, on the protection. But it was Carson real, Barnhart stepped in there. Carson stepped in, had a heck of a game. Uh, and the defensive front, Chris Jenkins, Really played well again. Mozzie Smith was getting off blocks and making tackles. Mason Graham had a very good game. Will Johnson is really getting comfortable out there and uh, and playing well. DJ Turner played really good. Uh, and Jamon Green is just – I can't remember the last time somebody caught a ball on Jamon. So uh, Rod Moore, big interception in the game. Uh, so there was a lot, a lot of guys. Yabi, uh, a lot of guys got at those – I think every – Every uh, each one of those seven sacks was a different guy, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Oh no, you're right. You're dead on. Seven and, sacks, seven different guys. Yeah, Mike Mo, uh, you know, played well enough to be defensive game ball, but uh, also uh, special teams got a block on the on the field goal. Just fighting, scrapping. You know, that first half is, uh, you know, it was uh, it was it was going back and forth, a dogfight in there, um, and then uh, be able to have those. It was really good moments in the second half and finish. That was uh, that was tremendous. An unexpected challenge in the first half. I know you can't share much, but uh, Mike Hart goes down. How's he doing? I know he released a statement. He's back in Ann Arbor. Um, have you had a chance to talk to him? Yeah, we talked uh, last night, and uh, you know that's that's what he said. Same things uh, that he said in his statement today. That he's he's feeling much better, and um, he's back in Ann Arbor uh, and wants to return soon. Really grateful for all the real outpouring of uh, concern, support, prayers. Uh, he mentioned that. Um, and I've gotten uh, so many people in the football world have reached out. Uh, Mike has tremendous respect yeah. from all in the, in the world of football, places he's coached, people he's coached against, uh, played against. Uh, you know, so many people have, uh, have reached out and, Either you know showed concern, uh, um, or you know please pass along a message to Mike. It be impossible. Uh, to, it would take a long time. Put it that way. He's uh, he's much loved out there, and I know he is by the Michigan fan base. And uh, and we'll uh, you know I think prayers are still needed. And um, but he's a strong, super strong guy. And uh, and I just have always had this 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 faith, this feeling that he's, he's, he's going to be back soon. And, yeah. uh, and, um, uh, you know, we anticipate that. Well, we yeah, anticipate his return, but in his stead, uh, Fred Jackson, uh, you yeah. mentioned earlier today, he's, uh, you had to get a waiver, uh, for him to step in. He's an offensive analyst. Um, he's been back. You and I both have, have great history for, with him. Michigan fans know him. He's been right. around the program for a long time. Um, just, you know, what's it like to have a guy like Freddie J be able to step in at a moment like this? Well, it's great. He's, uh, he's been an analyst since June uh, and been working on the offensive side of the ball and, you know, specifically uh, uh, been helping Mike 
with the running back. So it's, it's, it's real, real good. Uh, Fred is, uh, you know, he's an amazing coach and, and person and, uh, been great for me as a head coach. Um, cause he's been around, he's been seeing a lot of balls kicked off, John. <laughs> yes, mean, he has. We could, we could a play. lot of football. Yeah. We could, we could just start there and, uh, great relationships with everybody. And, uh, yeah, I think he's, uh, yeah, it's pumped up. It's going to be fun to, you know, to, to have him out there in that role. And, and now, I mean, I think I read a statistic where he's worked for every uh, head coach now, me, me included. Uh, yeah. It's, it's great. For the last, I don't know how many coaches. I mean, Was back, he to, an back to Lloyd Carr, coach right? When and Gary Moeller, maybe even. W- w- so he wasn't here. He wasn't an assistant coach when you were playing. No. No, it, it doesn't go back that quite that far. All right. Um, so let me ask you this then. Um, but I did make a, make a start. My first high school start at Pioneer High School was against Flint Southwestern, and Fred Jackson was the head coach. I believe we lost 28 to nothing, but uh, it was – they were so good that it was uh, – it ended up being – it was a moral victory, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take it. Um, J.J. McCarthy, 28 of 36. He's been very accurate. He leads the nation in accuracy right now. Um, how have you seen him develop in this offense, and what's the next step of his development as he continues to grow? Well, just uh, just been good. Um, you know, he's uh, he's shown no si- uh, signs of, you know, going out there and being timid or uh, – you know, not doing anything. You know, he's playing his game, which uh, is exactly what we want him to do. Um, just keep being him, and uh, his preparation has been been right on the mark. He uh, he has great concentration and focus in meetings and in practices, um, and in the games. You know, he's he's been really good. I, he understands he's got some real playmakers to get the ball to, but um, but he's a playmaker too, and. Um, He's been, he's been, it's just been good, you know. Uh, yeah. So just continue that, JJ, you know, and uh, that's, um, but, you know, just, I, I, you know, I don't feel like there's, uh, you know, the, the the big stage is something that's going to, you know, frighten him in any way, yeah. you know. So uh, he'll just go out there and have at it, and that's what we want him to do. Just go out, compete, have at it, and uh, and play his game. It's, it feels like, and I know there's a lot of guys that are making plays at key moments, but when you've needed plays to be made, you've had uh, upperclassmen, but also your captains. Either it's Mikey Sandra still, Mozzie Smith, Ronnie Bell had 11 for, for 121 this past weekend. How important is it for, for your team, for those guys at those key moments, to be able to step up, show leadership, and make plays? No, that's uh, what they say, the... Uh... Uh, big time players make big time plays and big time games. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very important. <laughs> very important, and there's so many of them, right? I mean, that uh, I think that's that's what you're saying. That's what's resonate with me. I'm on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, uh, in in special teams. Uh, I, I I said it a couple of weeks ago. I feel like our guys really uh, really uh, care about playing and winning for each other. And going out there and uh, just letting it rip, giving it everything they have. Rod Moore is going to join us a little bit later in the show. And one of the things, when I talk to him, I watch him play. And I go back to last year's Penn State game. And he mentioned that it, it's, it's, it was his first start. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of special things that he remembers from that game. But one thing that I always take away is his knowledge. He always seems to be very knowledgeable about where he's supposed to be, what he's supposed to be doing, but also his opponent. Is he one of those guys that um, is just a dog in the meeting room that just is trying to get as much information as possible before he goes out there on Saturday? I have evidence that he's just he's not one of those guys. He is the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to uh, preparation and, and studying tape, a year ago in training camp, his freshman year, uh, I went and looked at it, was able to look – at the guy's uh, iPads uh, through technology and to see how many times they'd opened uh, an install tape or watched practice tape, Mm -hmm. you know, during that uh, 29 day period during training camp, the amount of hours that uh, Rod and times that he had opened up that, that, uh, that iPad and either install or tape 
watching was twice as much than the next guy. It was ridiculous. I mean, some, like in the upward 550 times, and the next guy was right around 250. Yeah, 250 uh, is still a good number. It's a lot of. It's a good number. <laughs> 250 <laughs> times, uh, you know, to have to had clicked on one of the uh, one of the different periods or mm-hmm. drills or install tape, et cetera. Uh, yeah, it's very, very, very impressive. And uh, he, as soon as he started playing, he. He didn't play like a freshman, you know, from the time he got into games or from the time he started practicing or uh, playing in the games. Uh, and the other thing that stands out is, I mean, he's a real hitter. I mean, he's he is not timid, no. shy, uh, unaggressive in any way. And he's continued to be, uh, you know, that, that, that guy that tackles him, gets him on the ground uh, in space, also uh, – you know, opportunistic got a got another interception yeah. in this past game. So, uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite players, and and young too. He's he was um, second year. Yeah, he's one of the and young in terms of um, uh, he was 17 when he got here. Oh, really? Yeah, on college campus, he didn't turn 18 until uh, into his freshman year, a couple of months into his freshman year, and uh, so he's he's you know that's uh, that's pretty cool in, in this day and age of guys that reclass uh so they can be older so they can be older you know uh 18 sometimes 19 even before they get on a college campus and i've always got this theory too that i mean the young ones are really are really the better ones you know because they still got another year of of uh man growth yeah you know coming their way you know that usually happens around hidden gems 18 19 years old that's when you usually get that man year and um you know he's been a he's been a shining star and a great example of that. Well, we'll get a chance to talk about this coming weekend's matchup, uh, top ten matchup as Penn State comes to town. We'll be back with uh, head coach Jim Harbaugh in just a few moments. Tonight's show is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. As I mentioned, we'll be back with Coach Harbaugh. This is Inside Michigan Football, brought to you from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Number 10 Penn State is going to be in town this weekend, Coach. A lot of great matchups over the years, but especially since you've been here between Michigan, Penn State, a classic last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, You guys came from behind. What are some of the lessons that you guys took from last year's game that that might carry over to this year's uh, matchup with Penn State? Yeah, really – Last year's games and every every game that we played, uh, I mean, just got to be on point. We're gonna have to play really good because they play really good. They always do. They always uh, they're always well prepared. They're always good in run defense, run offense, uh, pass defense, pass offense. Uh, in in the kicking game, they're always really really good. And, and we say it a lot of times. I mean, this is the best unit we're gonna play all year. And uh, some phases. I mean, each year you kind of say that, and they always win games, and uh, and it's a, and it's a big time matchup, and so we don't need any any um, more reminders. But if we did, I mean, all anybody had to do is watch the NFL games yesterday. About every time they went to commercial, it seemed like they were advertising <laughs> the the Michigan Penn State game at the big house. So uh, we're 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 super excited about it. We're uh, we're fired up. Um, uh, to have a great week of preparation and and get ourselves uh, ready to play this game. How do you handle the emotions of a game like this, the buildup for a game like this? Because it's there's one thing to get ready for a first game against Colorado State, and there's this anxiety, there's this emotion, there's excitement. Now you've got a top-10 matchup, and it, especially now that you're halfway through the season, the players can start seeing, hey, we're undefeated. We're, we've got our goals for a Big Ten East championship going to Indianapolis, how do you manage the emotions of your group of players? Well, mainly by, uh, by getting prepared, you know, I think, uh, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, the, there's going to, before the game balls kicked off, you know, before you take the first hit in any game, uh, I mean, there's butterflies and, and especially a big game and maze out and, and against, uh, a rival opponent, uh, you know, those, those, those emotions are going to be sky high and that's great. And that's, that's where you want it. I mean, football is played by emotional people. Um, but you, but you feel good, uh, and, and the confidence comes, I believe from the, the practice and the preparation and, 
and getting to know your opponent as well as you possibly can. Sean Clifford, their quarterback, he's been there for a long time. He started a lot of games, a lot of experience. What what do you know about him, and what challenges does he provide your defense? He's a he's a strong runner and a, and a strong thrower as well. Uh, very experienced. He's been uh, been in a lot of uh, games. He's seen a lot of a lot of balls kicked off as well. Yes, uh, and he's he's a, just a tough, gritty competitor. We have a ton of respect for him. I mean, we played him last year, and uh, I don't know how he was staying upright. I mean, a Jabo Hutchinson. I mean, it was yeah. he was he was really taking some some hits and he was making some throws, you know, courage throws where he's just standing in there and, and threading the needle. So we got a ton of ton of respect for for Sean Clifford and um, and how he uh, how he operates and handles his business. I know it's early in the week and players change. They've got a couple of young players, uh, a freshman playing on defense. What again, same thing. What type of challenges? What do you see when you look at at the Penn State defense? Well, the really good run defense uh you know, maybe the best we're going to play, uh, and the and the secondary is is really good too. I mean, some real big time players, and I think that uh, is a great challenge to our guys who our receivers, uh, you know, are, are excited about that challenge. That's that's kind of the kind of the vibe I'm getting now. Uh, you know, gonna gonna have to get prepared and be and be really on point. But uh, you know, early in the week here, our guys are. You know, that's kind of the kind of the rallying cry. We, you know, we can. You know, there's confidence there that uh, mm-hmm. that they can. They want to test themselves. Put it that way. I mean, even even in a great way to say it. Uh, but they got some really really top notch guys on on all sides of the ball. Their punter. I mean, this guy is uh, he's amazing. Uh, he has balls that uh, hit inside the f- five yard line and they go backwards, sideways. Uh, I mean, I think he's like 15 for 15 and. And punting a ball and having it like a wedge. I mean, just like a uh, one of those pro golfers that hits a, a wedge shot into it the, just dies into the green. There. It just it just dies, spins, goes sideways, sits there. It's it's really incredible. Now a lot of their games have been on grass. Uh, we're gonna have to see if that's the same on the turf. But right now it's it's something to behold. And it's gonna be a maze out. Uh, adding to the environment, the excitement. Um, it, it, do you notice the the environment once the game uh, begins? Because the fans, obviously they're into it every week, but this week uh, everybody's going to be dressed in maize. We had one last year uh, for Washington, night game. Is is that something that hmm. uh, that you notice? Uh, I got I to gotta remind myself to notice it more. You know, sometimes I get so, uh, so locked in that I don't, and – but I do remember that that maze out from uh, last year against Washington from the pictures yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, in some the, great pictures, in the blimp, too. Yeah, great pictures in the blimp shot. And and uh, and there's times I, I do. I, I, you know, did it at uh, the end of the Ohio State game last year. I got I to gotta do that. I got to remind myself more to, to take it in a little bit more during the game. Another special moment on Saturday is going to be the dedication of the tunnel. Lloyd mm-hmm. Carr Tunnel at the University of Michigan. Um, I know you've talked about it a lot today. We've talked about it before, but um, your thoughts on that being named after Coach Carr? So excited about that. Uh, and I, I've said it a few times. The, the tunnel is like, its one of those sacred places here at, at Michigan Football Stadium to me and, and many others because – as a lot of things have changed, you know, the tunnel since 1927 has not. Uh, you know, that's like coming out. I imagine what the Coliseum would have been like for, you know, yeah. 600 years in operation that uh, you come out of, of a tunnel into the into the Coliseum, into the biggest stadium anywhere like we do here at the big house. And um, it's functional. It's gritty. You know, it's tough. It's... Uh, it's all ours. It's all Michigan, you know, and um, and it hasn't changed. It hasn't uh, been glitzed up with with any kind of uh, same tunnel you advances. ran down. Yeah, you know? same tunnel I ran <laughs> right. down. Same right. tunnel these guys are running right. down. Right. Yeah. Tom Harmon. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, that's and to have that named after a coach who is beloved and uh, tough and gritty and is all Michigan. Uh, to have that name for Lloyd Carr. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's great. Couldn't. Uh, couldn't have been a better idea, 
and we're super. We're just gonna be super proud. It's just great to have Lloyd Carr's name on uh, the Michigan Tunnel. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time. Best of luck as you continue to prepare for Penn State, and uh, and we'll talk to you next week. Appreciate it. Thank you.